welcome back to the IB Investor Channel. In this video, we'll take a look into Fingerprint Card's most recent earnings report. Fingerprint Card also changed the CEO recently, so it will be interesting to read from his remark at the end of this video. In this video, we'll cover the share price development, sales development and its profitability, the cash flows, the debt situation, and also the short situation. All right, so this is the share price and it's chart from my broker, Avanza. And we can see here that uh, the stock has had a very rough ride from start to end, pretty much. Uh, we can also see here that it actually started here around the IT bubble, around uh, the millennial shift or 2000, where the stock had a big rise here from like, yeah, I don't know, very low up until looks like it's in its 20s here or something like this. And then the stock went down. And then for the longest period, it was just, you know, stagnant uh, returns for, for many shareholders here holding a stock with some off years or odd years here where the stock went up. But then, of course, here we can see this big, big pileup of return that happened here in, in uh, 2015. And this was one of the most owned stocks in, in Sweden by this time when, when the stock or share price went up. So I would assume that a lot of people here or a lot of shareholders lost a lot of money when the shares then went down here. Uh, so it almost looks like a joyride here, you know, fast up, fast down. We can also see here that we recorded a 136.4 uh, kroners per share here at the all time high levels. And uh, yeah, it, it has gone down a lot now. Now it's just below one kroners here where it trades at currently. And over across all the periods here, basically, we can see that you only made money as of late if you hold the stock for the you know past few days here or month. You actually made some money, but for the other period, holding it during Friday, you lost some money. Holding it for three months, you lost money. And, and this year or year to date, you lost 66%. Uh, and the trailing 12 months, 80%. So it's just, you know, it's been super rough here. We can also see that uh, it had a pretty nice run up here from 2018 up until probably the end of 2021. But after that, again, you know, through whole 2022, the stock has just been negative. So, yeah, rough ride for the shareholders here for sure, even the ones holding it for long term. Now for the report card from management here from net sales and gross margins, profit margins. The EPS couldn't fit here because it just looked too messy. But uh, yeah, we can see that the net sales were very good here in 2015 and 2016. Uh, and that was also probably a result of the stock, you know, uh, moving so much upwards in the previous picture as we saw. Uh, however, we can see that the net sales has gone down over the years and it reported it's uh, second lowest here for this period for the most recent quarter here at 695. Uh, and it was uh, lowest done for this period here at 234 in 2014. So rough ride for this company, obviously. It's gone down a lot. And we can also see that the gross margins here are not really that good either. Uh, currently sits at 12.6% here, which is quite low. Remember that some of the industry companies that I, you know, make a little bit of fun of when I say that, yeah, it's industry margins that sits at around 30 to 40 percent or something like this. But this is much worse. This is the gross margin for a business that must produce higher. So at 12.6 percent, it's too low for survival. And we can see that here as well that the profit margins here for this case is minus 95 or 99.5 percent, which is basically in in the reds they're not making any money as it is right now it's way too low so yeah this paints a pretty you know alarming picture uh, for shareholders and also for investors looking to buy the stock it's just it looks very risky right now they need to bring up the gross margin to like at least 30 40 percent or something like this in order to have some you know uh, room for breathing i would say Now for the earnings per share, we can see that it's been a pretty rough ride here in the most recent quarter. As I mentioned previously, they're not making any money. So they're losing money per share, per share here. So 1.2 kroners a share they lost here, and it's been pretty rough for many years here. Uh, they did 
make a zero sum game here in 2021, but for many years here it's been minus. And here we can also see why the stock went traded up so much because yeah they reported some some actual earnings per share here, but uh, it's all been lost now in the most recent years. Now looking at the free cash flow margin, I mean it's pretty correlated to the earnings, so it was expected to be negative here. So we can see that minus 29% for the most recent quarter. Also here comparing it to precise biometrics here, uh, and also Tubi here. So Tubi is actually doing pretty well. That's it's at 7.1%, but precise biometrics is also quite in the red here. So I think it just looks like it's a tough business to be with, uh, within this biometric uh, stuff that they're developing and producing. Now for the free cash flow per share uh, in Kroners, we can see here it's negative for many years here. There were some years here where it actually was positive, but uh, I don't know if they had any direct share issue or something like this. But uh, uh, And here again, we can see the good years in 2015 and 2016 that sent the stock flying. But uh, for the most period, it looks pretty bad, uh, and especially now, because we are living in the now and, and these are negative numbers. So yeah, not so good. Now for the cash flow overview, uh, we can see that it paints a pretty negative picture here where actually most of the cash flows, both the cash from operations here in blue, this is the investing side, the CapEx, and the green one here is the free cash flow. So we can see that for you know the most recent quarter here and in 2022, all the cash flow metrics has been negative, which is super bad. We can also see here for for 2021 that free cash flows were negative, investing were also negative, which it should be, I guess. But uh, the operation or cash from operations have been pretty weak here for many periods. They were, however, very strong here in the good years of the stock, where they posted a 1.1 billion uh, cash from operations here, which is super strong. And you can see how good they were at uh, converting it to free cash flow here. With very low investing here, but um, yeah, it, it looks pretty rough for this company right now, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see. They did change management as of late, but I think the turnaround here to turn, you know, the cash from operations to positive, I think it's it's going to take some time for them. But at least this paints the picture of the cash flow overview for this company. It's so, uh, but it's not looking good right now. Now looking at the net debt to cash from operations, we've talked so much about this, so let's not talk about it concerning the cash from operations, but uh, at least the net debt here, we can see that it's been negative. So that means that they were debt free here and basically were debt free here until 2022 where they had some debt at 40, 43 bill, uh, million, sorry, but uh, they quickly reduced that. So now they're net debt negative again. So they don't have any debts right now or net debt. But the only thing here that worries me, as I said on the previous page, was the cash from operations does not look good. They need to increase the cash from operations so that at least uh, those are positive. As I said on the previous page, uh, the company is you know net debt free, so uh, the uh, net debt to EBITDA is minus uh, 0 0.37 times. So from this perspective, I mean, of course it looks good, but it doesn't mean that they can make a lot of acquisitions because the cash flows are so weak. So they're not in a good financial situation, even though this number is negative. And, and this makes for a little bit of a you know special circumstance because normally when you have a negative net debt to EBITDA, that's normally a good situation for many companies, but it all depends on what kind of business you have. When you know your sales is, is slowing down or, or you know beginning to diminish, whilst your cash flows are, are kind of weak, then there's a lot of things that you have to take into account. So this number is actually it doesn't tell us anything as investors, unfortunately, for this specific company more than it just tells us that uh, the company is currently uh, like debt free, but nothing else it doesn't tell us any if if this company has a lot of financial muscle right now. Pretty much the same uh, as I mentioned on, on the previous uh, picture here. Uh, a negative, and, and this is the EV to EBIT, by the way, ratio. And uh, it's not very common 
to see a company with a negative uh, you know EV to EBIT ratio and it may not reflect the two, uh, true value of the company and and, and usually you know, it's not, it's not a good sign for investors as it indicates that the company is either unprofitable, over leveraged or underappreciated by, by the market. But I don't think it's the latter because uh, we saw the financial previously. But, uh, you know, some investors may see this as an opportunity to buy the company at bargain prices. You know, if they believe that the company has a strong growth potential or hid, hidden assets or something like this. But we do know that they recently had a new CEO coming in so maybe he can you know make for a good turnaround but um, I, I wouldn't be too optimistic right now me personally I wouldn't touch this company but at least I would like to see a few quarters going forwards where you know where we can see that the new CEO has turned the ship around if you will but um, as I said this number right now it doesn't really provide enough information to make any any assessment Now looking at the short interest for this company, uh, it is shorted by 4.4% as we can see here. It's not the worst, far from it obviously, but uh, comparing it to SPB at rank 1 at 17%, EM at 15% at rank 2, and, and Hexatronic at rank 7 at shy 10%, 4.4% is obviously much lower, but it's still quite a bit of short interest than I would say. And I would be a little bit worried anyways because I mean there is interest here in the market that somebody has bet against this company and that means that their direction should be that the shares should go down more than up and that is in my book quite worrisome so if you want to own the stock you need to make very good research for why you think that these guys are wrong otherwise you know me personally I would just try to stay away from these type of companies Now for the CEO remark of this company, and, and this is the new CEO here on the left side that took over quite recently, and this is his first uh, uh, earnings report, I believe. So he's basically saying here that, yeah, they had some revenue growth, mainly from mobile PC and payments access outside of Asia. He also announces the completion of refinancing that reduces the interest costs and increases the financial flexibility, which is very good in a situ situation such as this where you know, with rising inf uh, interest rates and inflation happening. So it's pretty good that he has this under control now. Cost optimization, obviously. Uh, the CEO announces a plan to reduce the operating costs, about 204 million Swedish kroners annually, with full effect from the second half uh, of 2024. So this is Q3, Q4 next year. The plan aims to address the challenging market conditions that affects the gross margins, especially in the uh, mobile segment. They basically need to increase the margins because the margins, as I mentioned previously, is way too low. I think they sat at something like teens, like uh, 13 or something like this, if I don't remember incorrectly. So they have to increase it by much. They also have a new organization and governance. The CEO plans to make uh, a move to fun functional organization model with two main pillars, products and sales. He also introduces improved governance to support new organization and strategy. And the new strategy, then the CEO launches Fingerprint Biometrics Platform, a coherent, expandable set of tools and features that can be applied to address customers' uh, many challenges and opportunities. The platform expansion will focus on new modalities, new verticals, and new cases and new business models. But by the end of the day, the CEO's most important job here is to drive sales and make sure that they're taking enough money from the customers here because the margins is the problem with this country or company sorry the margins are just way too low he has to make sure that the margins are are being raised by you know 200 percent in some cases 300 percent in some cases because it's just way too low right now and this company is not profitable as a consequence so that's going to be his main focus uh, regardless and they have tough market environments uh, as it is right now so I think from this letter, the, the three page letter, he wrote a lot about his strategies and so on, but I think it, the most important thing is the numbers. So we will review what he says in the next coming quarters, because that's the only thing that is worth something if he can execute what he's, what, what, you know, what, what he's telling us. So otherwise it's just words. Any CEO can have a lot of words. Anyways, 
this was it for the CEO remark. And that also wraps up this video for this time. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And if you liked the video, please hit the like button below and subscribe for more content. Thank you very much. Bye bye.